Last fall, I told you I started buying some of the Milwaukee outdoor power equipment to replace the uh, DeWalt stuff that I had bought that um, I just hated. It it really was not good equipment. Um, and I did get some really good clearance buys and stuff on this at the end of the season last year. And I told you I'd do a video once I got a chance to use it for a while. So figured I'd make put one together today after using everything and, um, you know, give you a little idea of how I like it, how it works, and, um, you know, the different attachments that I do have. And you can see they're all pretty well worn now. So I've really gotten a good chance to give them a workout. All right, first thing I'm going to show you is like this hedge trimmer. Um, it's, a, it's a real handy thing, and it uh, makes things like uh, it's got this maple out front that I want to trim the leaves off of every couple of months. They grow down so they hit you when you walk under it and stuff. And you can see um, this makes it a really easy job. The attachment just goes right on there. You can change the angle of it and just walk around. Um, before, I used to have to just go around with the hedge trimmer and hold it up over my head and I just couldn't do that anymore so you know this really does uh, do a great job like that and also um, while the hedges are overgrown I decided today I you know do the video and finally get to cutting them but uh, you can see this thing uh, this hedge trimmer is pretty awesome There's no bending over or anything really it, uh, it reaches good uh, it's got about a six foot reach like that it's a little heavier than a standard uh, this is my old uh, DeWalt trimmer was but it you know it makes up for it and how easy it is to use and um, like this hedge is really I, I let it go because I was waiting to do this video and you can see it's really overgrown now but um, you can see just how easy it is to uh, cut it with this big thing you don't don't have to cut from the front cut from the back it's about six foot wide and the you know the this one bar arm on it does uh does make it just perfect for doing it um and you can actually put a, a second extension on it and or just one extension on it to um use it for taller hedges and stuff like that but it you know it really does a good job like this and the it did come with a strap, and that strap really does, uh, you know, make everything easier, too, when you're holding it up and stuff. Especially when you've got muscle issues like I've had lately. So I just thought I'd show you this thing uh, is a beast when it comes to uh, cutting hedges. And I'm, a, I'm kind of a butcher, so, you know, I don't do a perfect job. But um, this really turns it into a five-minute job doing the hedges out front. And you can see you just pull that and this thing will index around 180 degrees. And you can stand back away and kind of get an idea, you know, sight it up that you're going fairly straight and stuff like that. So it, uh, you know, it does help me a little bit, getting a little bit straighter. But, um, you know, I'll never be a, a good head trimmer, I don't think. I'm just a head butcher. And again, here it is on the side. Um, very little bending, you don't have to bend over and get down to the ground and stuff. You know, it does reach good and it, it does cut really good. It's, um, I think this will cut up to like almost a three quarter inch branch. Also, for trimming, you know, the bushes back from the house there. Um, trim that back and then I've got to trim that back at the hedge off too. And I did start with this. Um, I got about halfway down the hedge before I had to walk back there. And I did have enough, you know, clearance cut where. Before you always had a, um, it was tough with the, the little hand one. I'll show you that in a second, but this really did speed up the job, and uh, you know it didn't didn't take that long at all this time. It took longer to rake it all up and clean it up. And there it is, the first pass. I just have to go back through and um, do a little more evening on it, and that'll be it. Now. Um, with one of the pieces of equipment, I did get this lower for free, and I've been using the DeWalt lower up till now, but this thing is uh, so much better. It's just got so much more power, um, so much better balance on it, and uh, the one thing with the DeWalt, it always sucked anything loose into the um, back of it there, where this thing here kind of has the battery there, so it doesn't grab onto you and, you know, suck your pants leg in or anything, and this one definitely does have uh, a lot more power, too. Both brushes, um, both 18 volt, but uh, definitely this uh, 
This one here is good. And I'm just blowing off all that onion stuff I had from the onions I had out there drying. My wife told me clean it up. So, you know, definitely the Milwaukee's a winner in this case too. I think, uh, you know, in my opinion, it is. You may have a different opinion of it, but it's more balanced and easier to use. Now here's the old DeWalt hedge trimmers I've been using for a couple of years, and you know they do work good. They still they have uh, done a good job, and they you know they still do work good and stuff. And I'll probably keep them around because they're a lot lighter for you know littler jobs and stuff like that. But um, you know definitely uh, a lot more vibration and stuff like that. So now let's go down and do a little bit of weed whacking here with the weed whacker attachment. First of all, I'll show you these apple trees. Uh, you can see how dry it is. We've had such a drought, but we still do have apples, and they actually look pretty good this year with very little bug damage. So I guess the drought's helping. I just wanted to show you. We've got some. These are one of those Cornell extension varieties. And there's a weed whacker head on it, and I do have the strap on it here, but you really don't need it with this one. You can see just how... Um, comfortable it is. Um, it's not like the DeWalt one where you had to kind of bend over and reach with the handle. And it does have a much longer arm on it, so you don't you can get right under the trees without uh, you know having to duck for the branches and stuff for like these apples and stuff. And it does have uh, quite a bit more power with a big cut. So um, this one, uh, you know, is definitely a winner over that DeWalt one. It had that handle you couldn't adjust and it had the really bad vibration that would make your hand numb after about 15 minutes. And you can see this one's just a monster. It does do a good job and it's, it's really comfortable to use. Um, the strap does help some, but you can see that the head doesn't bounce off the ground. You don't have the weight of the head down there that you're fighting try to keep it level and stuff it's just uh, well balanced and it just kind of floats along there so you know none of those uh, brown spots where the head went down and you know hit the ground dirt and again it's it's got that long enough arm on it that you can get down under trees and stuff like this without any problem a little bit of reaching but um, you don't really have to fight with it because it's really well balanced and again, I'm going to take the strap off just to show you. See, it's, it's perfectly balanced here with the uh, 8 amp hour battery it comes with. And um, really easy to just keep it a controlled height off the ground. You just swing with it and no problem whatsoever. No, no fighting it to keep it up off the ground. So I just wanted to show you and, you know, tell you that this one's definitely 100% better than the um, that DeWalt one that I did do the review on. And a couple minutes later, you know, it only took like five minutes to uh, do that. And again, I to these uh, do use the 8 amp hour batteries. And I get about the same out of this one with the 8 amp hour as I did out of the DeWalt with the 6. But uh, I get twice as much work done. And the chainsaw does have the 12 amp hour, but that's too heavy for the weed whackers, I found out. Alright, so let's look at the chainsaw next. Um... As you saw, I started out with that DeWalt saw, and I was never really happy with that one. Didn't cut good and um, leaked oil. Well, guess what? This one actually does leak the bar oil also. Looks like it's a problem with all of them. And again, you can see this thing is really well balanced. A um, little bit heavy, but um, balanced nicely. It feels really good. And this one here has the power of a small gas chainsaw. This is really equivalent to my little Echo chainsaw, and it does have a, a better chain on it and um, more aggressive cut. So I've got this dead ash here. I was kind of left it there. I was going to try to pull it over with this tractor and see if I could get the root out and stuff, but figured I'll just uh, you know, take this chainsaw out. Now, I don't have my chaps on, and I don't have, I should have a hard hat on when you're cutting these old ashes because the pieces fall down, but. I just drove down there and uh, decided to, you know, just knock it down and leave it high so I'd have something to grab on to get the stump out. And I knew it was going to go that way, and I figured, oh, well, I'll just cut it and give it a push and make it look like I'm strong, but nope. Didn't cut quite far enough. And there it goes. Um, now, this is a, uh, you know, it's one of those EAB damaged uh, 
ash trees. So the emerald ash borers are, have killed just about all of them in the area. I've got a ton of them to take down. And this saw uh, really um, for stuff like this is just perfect. It's, it's the equivalent of a gas saw. And it's a it's really well balanced and stuff, so it's it's heavy, but it's not it's it's balanced and it's easy to use. And um, I'll definitely grab this one over the uh, gas saw anymore because there's no smell, no you know, no mixing gas, no worried about gas laying in it. And this ash is very dry and it's very hard, and you can see this uh, this goes through it like nothing. Really, there's no power loss. Uh, you know, I guess if you if you take a 12-inch ash like this and decide to slice it up, it's going to slow you down a little bit. But um, pretty much about the same as I'd say my little, uh, I think it's a 30 cc echo saw. So this, uh, you know, this definitely is. 10 times better than the, um, the DeWalt one that I bought, and I'll show you that in a second. But it was, you know, it did cost a little bit more, but I think it's, you know, it's really worth it when you see the aggravation that you get with a tool that doesn't work right. I'm just going to cut this up a little bit here, get down to the smaller size before I pull out the DeWalt saw. That one really struggled with um, the hard ash like this. So this saw, uh, you know, definitely is going to always be on uh, Gizmo. Just out in the yard when I need it. And I've been using it down below. I'll show you in a second, too. Now here's that DeWalt saw on a smaller section. And you can see it's really not balanced at all. It's all back weighted and you have to kind of rock it to get it to even cut this ash. It, it's, it's, you know, it takes about twice as long to make it cut and um, this is a brand new chain on there sharpened and uh, the other one on the Milwaukee has been, you know, used quite a bit so uh, and there you can see the oil drips out of this one too and there's the next one to come down as soon as it cools down a little bit. They're all over though, if you look at my yard. I got a bunch that were supposed to come down last fall. I'd say this the Walt is about the equivalent of the um, Milwaukee pole saw there. Now this is just a clip. Uh, I've got them cleaning up down below around the pond and I've been pulling out trees and stuff and haven't posted that video yet, but you know I've been using this saw quite a bit and it really uh, it really shines. Um, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm very happy with it. You can see this is a little bit wetter wood and it just goes through there like uh, just like butter. And uh, it's just very comfortable to use. It's, it's just uh, no vibration or anything. Um, the DeWalt just kind of bounces and vibrates when you cut anything. So this one here definitely is a uh, you know another winner. That makes short work of, uh, you know, cleaning up a, a little tree or something like that. Um, you know, it's not for big firewood, but it's, you know, anything up to about 12 inches, I'd say you'd, you know, have a good chance of cutting it with this. Now let's look at the pole saw. Um, same thing here, pole saw leaks oil. They all do. Um, I don't know what it is. I think it may be caused by the heat, that they get hot in the daytime and they expand and force the oil to come through the pump. Then at night they cool down, they stop leaking, then the next day they heat up again and the oil expands and squeezes out. But so I just put a little enough oil in for the job that I'm going to be doing so I don't have it all leaking out all over the place later on. And again, they just snap right on. These attachments uh, take like two seconds to uh, slip in place, lock in place, and then you uh, just tighten that little thumb screw. So this is the kind of stuff I've been doing with it, using it mostly for so far. And I've got a lot of trees down there. I took trees down years ago and um, we've got these trees growing out of the what's left of the stump because I never got the stumps all out. And you know, I've got three, four inch diameter trees now that I'm trying to get out of there and they're all buried in prickle bushes and stuff. 
so you can't really get in there with a chainsaw and it's you know really not safe to try to do them with a chainsaw and I've been really you know using this this brush to actually pole saw for that and it does um, you know it does a good job with that and it's not as fast cutting as the the bigger chainsaw it's got a different chain on it I think it's got the equivalent chain of what that's the wall pad on it seems to cut about the same speed as that but it's pretty comfortable to use it's no vibration really well balanced and stuff so um, no noise from you know a gas motor or anything like that and it works every time so I'm happy with it um, I never did buy the DeWalt variety of this I, I gave up on DeWalt tools uh, you know right about after the chainsaw and the weed whacker but um, here you can see it's you know no problem making cleaning up a big mess so uh, definitely a, another handy thing and especially when you're dealing with I've got some big berry bush pricker bushes and rose bushes and stuff I have to clean up and uh, this really need something long for them and about the only thing that I, I really don't like about it is the um, the blade is fixed on the end you can't rotate it or anything but um, that's good and bad I guess it gives you a more durable gearbox in assembly because that's usually what breaks on this type of saw so um, you know it's, it's one thing they have to learn to live with because it does it's easy to get pinched and stuff like that if you're um, not paying attention when you get into this tangled brush and stuff like that and I did uh, get it pinched actually I should have checked the chain the chain was loose when I started I really didn't tighten that I should have tensioned it but I did get it caught in one of those branches and I took the chainsaw down and just cut it out and you can see um, <coughs> it did get you know pretty well tangled in there the chain caught caught sideways and it jumped off the uh, sprocket I guess the drive sprocket and came loose because it was probably just too loose to start out when I look back at the video when I first picked it up so simple thing to, to get it back on track just to loosen it up a little bit tighten that back up and um, you know the tool does come with it but it's no place to attach it to it so you have to carry it separately but there we are all ready to go again. So then I, you know, just figured I'd put it together with the long extension on it to uh, show you how high it can cut. This is with one extension. I guess you can go to two extensions, but you'd have to be per fairly strong because um, with it up like this, I can barely hold it up with one extension. I kind of had a hard time when I kind of slipped down. I had to go back and uh, get a second shot at it there because I'm on a hill there. But you can see it does, um, it will reach a 12, 12 or 14 foot high branch, no problem, and cut it down. And it is a monster once you put that extension on it. You know, it does get quite heavy, so, you know, that could be a problem for some. But then again, all these things, they just come right apart easily. You can see, just loosen the thumbs. Well, you can't see because I'm in the way, but just loosen the thumb screw, push the button. Okay, there we are. And they pop right apart, and you can change them out. Now, there is one more attachment for it that I don't have a uh, bed edger. But, uh, you know, basically I have all the rest of them, and I have two of the power heads. In the blower there, and I will say that you know I'm very happy with uh, this. It's it's really ergonomic, easy to use, um, low vibration compared to Dewalt equipment, and uh, you can even see this head much better, much higher quality head, and it does have a much larger cut than the Dewalt did. And just having a motor up behind you really does balance everything out. I find it seems to give it a lot more power. So I just thought I'd do an update, and uh, you know I promised a video once I got to a point that I got to use them for a while, and uh, you know this is that point. So now it's time to just uh, run back up in the house and take my afternoon nap. Had enough this morning, and uh, that little kid was really been handy. Gets me up and down this hill, no problem. And I did finally eat one of those apples, and yeah, it was really good. Uh, a little bit dry tasting, but 
you know, really tart and sweet, kind of, and nice. So there you have it. First looks at all this uh, Milwaukee outdoor power equipment. And I'll do updates, you know, as I go along. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.